So for our message today, if you've been following along with East Hills this month, you might recognize uh, that our theme, the overarching theme in September is our being called to serve. Last week, we considered our blind spots when it comes to matters of faith and serving Jesus. Um, are we willing to learn? Can we acknowledge there are things and there are people we just don't see until we are open to looking? Our being open to what God wants us to see, our being open to learning, we said, those are ways that we serve God. So today, on this Moravian Day of Service, we consider the text from the book of James, which asks people of faith this, now that we see, what do we do? To return to the analogy of being on the road, is our faith something that moves us and others along in this journey we call life, or are we stuck on a dead-end road? In terms of faith, which words might better describe where we are at? In action or in action? For James, belief in Jesus Christ demonstrates itself through practice and manifestation. Claims about belief are empty unless they're aligned with actions and works, he says. The book of James actually has much to say about the life of faith and specifically things that are not compatible with the life of faith. For instance, last week we heard about indifference. Indifference is not compatible with the life of faith. And early in this letter, chapter 1, James writes that people of faith are to be hearers and doers of the word. Our faith is to move us, James tells the church, to care for, he specifically names orphans and widows. Move closer to people who have experienced terrible loss, he writes, because in close proximity to people who are hurting, it is there where we encounter Christ. Indifference is one thing not compatible with faith, James says. Last week we heard from chapter 2 in the book of James that favoritism is something else that's not compatible with the life of faith. People are tempted to show partiality and to favor people who can somehow benefit us or our cause. And James says, love the people who can do nothing for you in return. And that's kind of countercultural for us because we keep score really well sometimes. What do things cost us? What's the return on our investment? So in this particular section of the epistle, it seems James is concerned with an understanding of faith that is just too small. People might be tempted to reduce faith to a series of statements that profess belief but for James, faith is operative in a person's life. And here, he identifies a critical gap between the head and the heart and the hands. What we believe and what we feel and what we actually do. So an example of this gap might be an encounter with someone who's homeless. In our head, we say we believe in Jesus, and we know Jesus had compassion, showed mercy to people who were in the margins of society. We know that in our head. In our hearts, we might encounter a person who is homeless, and we might feel something for that person. We might feel compassion because they are struggling. We might feel in our hearts sorrow or sadness. We might wonder about that person's story. We might have actually feel anger about that situation, that that's the reality for some. James would ask, we know it here, we feel it here. How do we respond? In action or in action? You get what I'm doing there with the words, right? In action, one word. <laughs> In action, two words. Okay. I had to just make sure. <laughs> Otherwise, this totally makes no sense at all. <laughs> 
Another example, sadly, very familiar, very timely, and please let me be clear here, I'm not making a statement about anyone's political position on this matter, but I'm framing this in the lens of faith. So in our head, we profess faith in Jesus Christ, who had compassion, who showed mercy, who teaches us to go and do likewise. We are cut to the heart every time there is a school shooting. We grieve, we seethe, we feel it here. James would have us ask, how do we respond? In action or in action? There's often this tension concerning the relationship between faith and works. There's a long-standing thought that what the Apostle Paul taught about grace, salvation as a gift of God that we receive through no effort of our own, but only through the grace of God, and a seeming contradiction to the teachings of James concerning works. Faith without works is dead, James wrote. But I'm not so sure the two oppose each other. Moravians, in a way, acknowledge both as true. We have what are called essential beliefs. Maybe you're familiar with that. Our essential beliefs say that God does God's part and we do our part. We believe in a triune God, a God who creates and redeems and sustains, and that's God's part as creator, as Christ in spirit. And nothing we do or fail to do changes God's part. As Christians, we also have a part, though. We are responsive to what God has done and what God is doing. We respond in faith, in love, and in hope. So God does God's part. We do our part. We respond to what God is doing. And here is both the beauty and the challenge of Moravian theology, that the church does not tell us precisely what to do. We are not told what position to take on any particular matters in society, but rather our faith is rooted in what God has done, what God is doing, what God will do. And we are called to respond in loving action. God does what God does. We respond in faith, in love, in hope, Evidenced in living lives in service to others. It's how we show we love God. It's our response. As followers of Jesus, we look to the example he set, right? Jesus came not to be served, but in order to serve. And he showed his love in acts of healing and mercy and justice and friendship. And by his love, people would experience what God is like. Jesus lived this entire life, his entire life in service to God, he even sacrificed his life so that we could truly live. Faith, in action or in action. We might ask, what does that mean, living lives in service to God? What does faith in action look like for us? 1 Peter chapter 4 tells us, Serve one another with whatever gift you have received. It doesn't say use whatever gift you will get at some time in the future, or use whatever gift you have when it's developed and perfectly refined. It says use what you have, whatever gift you have, right here and right now. You've already got something the world needs. God makes it so. God creates us that way. And the awesome thing is it doesn't have to be something spectacular or something out of the ordinary. In fact, very often extraordinary things, extraordinary serving happens in the ordinary everyday activity of our lives. I was recently reading an article about early Moravian, the early Moravian settlement here in Bethlehem, and a few things struck me about people who first lived in this community. Men and women and children worked as though they did everything in service to the Lord. 
Everyone had something to contribute for the common good, and because people understood everything they did was doing for God, because that was the understanding, then everything was important. The article explained it was considered an honor to chop wood for the master's sake. A fireman felt his post was imp as important as guarding the Ark of the Covenant. For each trade, special worship services were held. For the opening of harvest, farm laborers had a love feast early in the morning. I got to share that idea with my brothers. <laughs> They walked into the fields with a sickle in hand and a hymn of praise on their tongue. Spinners and weavers and joiners and cartwrights, hewers of wood, milkers of cows, knitters, sewers, and washerwomen all had their own love feast and special hymns written for them and their lives of service to the Savior. Bishop Spangenberg's vision was that every man, woman, and child was enlisted in what he called the missionary army, all members of the community deployed in service to the Lord. The second thing that struck me in reading was that one of the reasons we have access to so much Moravian history is because very detailed diaries were kept and one of the reasons those diaries were kept is because people understood God was present with them in every moment of their lives, whether mundane or spectacular, because God was with them, it was noteworthy. Every moment worth writing down. Times really are a little different for us, aren't they? We don't live in a closed community. We're not surrounded every day by people of faith, by people who believe in Jesus Christ, who view every aspect of their lives in service to the Lord. So guess what? We really have to work at it sometimes, don't we? We need to be intentional in affirming God's presence and God's work and our response. Jesus once told his close friend Martha, you are distracted and worried about many things. And at a time she was doing something very good. She was preparing a meal for Jesus. But it seems like from the reading, the meaning and the joy in what she was doing was somehow lost on her. I wonder if that ever happens for us. Do we forget who we are or become distracted by many things such that we are not able to see our lives in service to the Lord? Or we are not able to take joy in the call to serve? Faith in action. Sometimes faith in action happens to all of us to one degree or another. And that's what James saw in the early church. It's why he wrote this letter. Inaction happens for various reasons, and sometimes the gift of inactive faith, unexpressed love, is that it helps us to know if we've been stuck for a while. It helps us to recognize if there is a gap between what we believe in our head, what we feel in our heart, and what we're doing with our hands. Belief in God is one thing, but when belief moves from head to heart to hands and feet in motion, that, James says, is evidence of faith. God has not designed us to be people whose faith remains parked on a dead-end street with nowhere to go. Love needs an outlet, friends. And guess what? We are the ones called to put faith in action. Amen.